Hey guys, it's Pineapple, and in this video, we'll be continuing our coverage of the My Hero Academia Ultra Analysis Databook. This databook has over 200 pages of profiles and stats, so it's about time we start delving into those pages to get to the meat of what's in there. If you guys get this video to 4,000 likes, I'll start working on all of the teachers from UA that we know about, including All Might, Aizawa, and teachers like Midnight and Present Mike. I set the like goals, one, because it helps me out a lot to get the video seen, but two, because at this point in the year, there are so many different possible videos that I could be recording or getting ready, but set a like goal lets me know how badly you guys want these ultra analysis videos instead of my regular planned uploads. So if you really want to see the UA hero stats, make sure to smash that like button. I want you guys to know that you can follow me on Twitter at Vocal Pineapple for all sorts of news and wild tweets, and you can keep up with my channel and uploads by clicking that bell icon, then clicking the drop down menu and clicking notify. That'll give you a notification whenever I upload, just like the heroes get when there's an attack. So you can be ready and right on the scene. With that said, let's get to this video about how all of our characters have improved from book one all the way to book two. Hit it! All right, so the point of this video is to show you guys what the stats are for each 1A student in the official data book written by Kohei Horikoshi. The book covers up to My Hero Academia chapter 240, so the stats are pretty up to date. We thankfully have two data books now, so we can actually see how they compare to their original stats from the first data book. So let's get started. I'm gonna try to go down the seating order in the class so you can follow along and see how well you know the order. First off, we've got Yuga Aoyama. Aoyama's previous stats were a D in power, C in speed, C in technique, C in knowledge, and an E in teamwork. He wasn't very powerful or very fast or very good at anything really. This is of course easy to poke fun at, but Aoyama actually has struggles with his quirk and he is the most similar in the class to Deku in that regard. He grew up needing a device to make his quirk work and there's actually some theories that he doesn't even have a quirk at all. He was only a little better than awful when he first entered UA, but he was still capable enough to be somewhat reliable. His stats now though have improved a bit. He still has a D in power, a C in speed, and a C in knowledge, however his technique has gone up to a B, and he now has a sparkliness of an S. In the second data book, the teamwork stat is pretty much removed from everyone to give them a custom stat that tells you more about them in a more unique way. His technique being raised reflects all of the training that he's done over the course of the training arcs he's been in to come up with different ways to shoot his laser. He can fire it in long bursts, short bursts, curved lasers, and all sorts of stuff, but it still gives him a stomach ache that takes him out of the game. There's still a lot of speculation that Aoyama is the traitor, and at the very least, Horikoshi does have something planned for this guy because we've seen there is something much more serious that lies beneath that constant smile of his. The next student we'll cover is number two in the seating order, our resident alien princess, Mina Ashido. Mina's stats in the first data book were a C in power, B in speed, A in technique, E in knowledge and a B in teamwork. With a C, she was already more powerful than let's say Aoyama, but her stats aren't actually awful for a student at the time. She hadn't really had much time to shine, but as the story's gone on, Ashido's actually had a few moments where her quirk came in handy, like during the provisional license exam. The new stats for our students are after the 1A versus 1B joint training battles, where she also had to hold her own with an amazing uppercut. So let's see how she's improved. Mina's new stats are a C plus in power, a B plus in speed, an A in technique, an E in knowledge still, and an A plus in dance. So it seems her power and speed went up, but why could this be? Well, we've known since the sports festival that Mina actually has some deceptively impressive strength, but with all the training the students have done, especially considering that Mina is always dancing and using capoeira style movements, it makes sense that the natural strength of her body would raise a bit, but not too much because she's still trying to focus on being agile and nimble with her movements. Her speed going up probably has to do with Mina's ability to skate on her acid and the fluidity of her movements. And of course, her having an A plus in dance isn't a surprise to anyone because she is the one that teaches Deku a thing or two about how to move dynamically. Next up, we've got everyone's favorite hopping hero, Froppy, also known as Suyu Asui. Suyu is definitely one of those characters that could easily fit in another comic book universe, and she could definitely thrive in a forest or a big city style environment with her ability to get around and also capture villains at strange angles thanks to her tongue. Suyu's old stats were an E in power, C in speed, B in technique, B in knowledge, and an A in teamwork. 
Since these stats were taken, Suyu has worked alongside Nejire, Ochako, and Ryukyu to become an even better hero. The highly mobile all-female team of heroes soars through the air from point A to point B, and with her amazing teamwork, she combos with Ochako and the others really, really well. You'll see more of her in Season 4's internship arc, but how has she improved since then? Well, her new stats are a C in power, which is up from her E previously, a B plus in speed, A in technique, A in knowledge, and an S in trust. Her E in power going to a C is probably due to Suyu focusing more on her knockout power. It's not just about capturing someone with your tongue for her anymore, because she realizes that you actually have to be able to throw that person around or even incapacitate them so they aren't able to escape or injure her tongue. Her speed has gone from a C to a B plus because Suyu is much more capable of jumping and swinging between buildings, like I said, now keeping up with characters that can legitimately fly like Ryukyu and Nejire with no problem at all. The interesting one here is the S in trust. Much like Aoyama and a few others students that we'll talk about on this list, there's a theory that Suyu could be the UA trader, and this S in trust represents how much trust I'm sure she has in her friends, but it could also represent how much trust they have in her. It would be a crushing blow then for that S in trust to actually be on a character that's actually the trader. It would make that scene during season 3 where Froppy cries to her friends pretty sinister actually, but I still have my doubts that our frog girl has anything to do with the villain. So let's move on. Next up we have the closest thing we have to a speedster in UA. Tenya Ida. Ida comes from a long line of speed-based heroes, but we see in My Hero Academia Vigilantes that there's actually a much faster and more efficient quirk than his when it comes to absolute speed. Still though, Tenya's speed isn't anything to laugh at. In his old stats, he had a power of B, speed of A, technique of C, knowledge of B, and teamwork of C. You can imagine that the C in teamwork is because of how he went off on his own to try and fight Stain, and the C in technique is there because Ida can't really make quick lateral movements, but he is good at running in a straight line. The B in power fits because of course, something moving that fast can hit you really hard, but how do his new stats stack up? Tenya now has an A- in power, S in speed, C in technique, B in knowledge, and an S in seriousness. His stats have actually improved to be quite impressive. An A- in power is nothing to scoff at, but again, that's probably due to his S in speed and how powerful a full speed kick from Ida would be. This boost in stats comes from Ida now being able to use a new technique that he calls Recipro Turbo. He can do this thanks to new mufflers in his legs that can handle way more torque and output from the engines that he has inside of his legs, meaning he can move even faster than his Recipro Burst and Recipro Extend for 10 whole minutes. It's said that this move even rivals Gran Torino's quirk with how fast he can go, but Gran Torino definitely still has an edge because he can make quick and nimble movements while Tenya is sort of stuck running in long, awkward paths. Let's hope that S in seriousness doesn't keep him from loosening up a little bit. Next up, we've got another member of the original core friend group and an excellent hero to boot. Ochako Uraraka, also known as Uravity, has to be one of the fandom's favorite characters in many ways, and now let's see if her stats live up to that acclaim. Previously, Ochako's stats were a D in power, E in speed, A in technique, C in knowledge, and an A in teamwork. She wasn't very strong or fast because her idea for her quirk was that she can be an amazing rescue hero who depends on her quirk to lift buildings and various things to get people to safety. This is still something that she can definitely do, but thanks to her training with Gunhead, she's become able to hold her own in battle, actually becoming quite the monster as she pretty much took down the entire team in the 1A versus 1B battles. Her stats have improved to show the training and the experience that she's gained. Her new stats feature a B minus in power, a B plus in speed, an A in technique, a B in knowledge, and an S in saving money. You can see how her training of Gunhead has dramatically raised her D in power and E in speed to a B minus and B plus respectively. And her training of Nejire and Ryukyu, the number nine hero, have taught her all about the actual hero experience, and it seems it's even helped her learn how to fly to a certain degree. Either way, let's hope that that S in saving money goes to good use and she does get her family the house and life that she thinks that they deserve. Our sixth student on this list is Mashirao Ojiro. Now Ojiro has always been one of the plainest students in the class, and he hasn't gotten much time to shine like some of the other students in the class, but he did get a little moment in the provisional license exams, and he did handle himself well against the villains during the USJ incident. Even if he gets the creeps around Shinso, his stats weren't awful at first. He was rocking a B in power, D in speed, B in technique, C in knowledge, and an A in teamwork. 
Over the course of the series, he hasn't had much to do, but he's still really proficient in martial arts, and he could probably teach Deku a thing or two about actual combat techniques, if Deku would bother to ask. We know that Ida is Deku's kick buddy, and the two practice kicks and different kicking techniques, so it would be cool for Ojiro to teach Deku some takedowns and some good strikes. Ojiro's new stats are actually pretty funny, but that's not to say that he hasn't improved. He has a B in power, B in speed, B in technique, B in knowledge, and a B in total abilities. That's right, Ojiro has a B across the board, making him even more plain than he was before, and I think that that's the gag. He's supposed to be the most average or plain hero there is, so of course his stats have to match that. Our seventh student is Denki Kaminari. Kaminari is our electrical hero, and that comes with a lot of expectations because characters of lightning or electrical powers tend to be pretty broken or OP in their respective series. I always think of Kaminari as Todoroki, but with electricity instead of ice or fire, but I guess that's not quite reasonable since the drawbacks of his quirk literally fry his brain if he overdoes it. His previous stats in the first data book were a C in power, a C in speed, a B in technique, E in knowledge, and an A in teamwork. His power and speed leave a lot to be desired, and his knowledge being an E makes me think that that's in regards to how he was using his quirk, because it's obvious that the huge electrical discharges aren't going to be his primary thing. Kaminara uses his new hero upgrades to use his ability more like an electric zapping gun that he can target via the disc that he throws out. His stats haven't improved much, but he now has a B plus in power, a C in speed, a B in technique, an E in knowledge, and an S in ooh wee 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 wee. <laughs> his quirk output has definitely gone up, and he still goes stupid after a certain point, but he is improving. Hopefully his internship with Kamui Woods and Edshot helps him grow even further. Moving on to a fan favorite character in the class, and the boy who's probably going to get some of the most love this season, we have Eijiro Kirishima. Kirishima has always been one of the cooler and more liked students in the class, but he definitely reached new heights during the internships arc that we're currently watching in My Hero Academia Season 4. Originally, his power was a B, and he had a C in speed, C in technique, C in knowledge, and a B in teamwork. There's something to know with Kiri's new stats, so tell me if you notice. He now has an A- in power, a C- in speed, a D in technique, a C in knowledge, and an S in manliness. If you notice, oddly enough, Kirishima's speed and technique have both gone down from two Cs to a C- and a D respectively. Why could this be the case? Well, I'm wondering if his fight with Rappa gave him any sort of injuries or fears that he has to deal with moving forward, but the likely cause for this is that Kirishima's movements are slower and less nimble thanks to his unbreakable form. He's definitely far more durable and powerful, but having his body be all jagged like that limits his range of movement to a certain degree. In classic manly Kirishima fashion, it seems like he's forsaken speed and technique for raw power and durability, something that he'll definitely need if he ever comes up against Gigantomachia, the villain that might be responsible responsible for Crimson Riot's untimely demise. Here's hoping that he finds a way to localize the unbreakable hardening to places like just his arms, because if you could have a nimble and powerful Kirishima, he'd be a massive problem to deal with. The ninth student on this list is Koji Koda, who is pretty much our Dr. Doolittle of the class. Koda's had pretty much no time at all in the series to shine, but he did get a decent moment where he controls a massive insects during the joint training arc. There's not really much to say about him here besides the stats themselves, so let's get to him. He had a B in power, D in speed, C in technique, C in knowledge, and an E in teamwork in the first data book. His stats actually haven't changed at all, but the new data book replaces the teamwork stat with silence for him, where he has a B. I'm sorry for any fans of Koda's, but he's actually probably the student I'm least interested in learning anything about or talking about. Maybe one day, but not today. Alongside Koda on my list of characters that haven't really done much and that I don't particularly care too much about is Rikido Sato, also known as Sugar Man. Sato's previous stats in the Ultra Archive data book were a B in power, an E in speed, D in technique, C in knowledge, and a B in teamwork. In the new data book, his stats have gone up to an impressive A plus in power, a B plus in speed, D in technique, C in knowledge, and most importantly, his popularity amongst girls is actually an A. This means that while Sato isn't the most popular character in my eyes, he definitely has the attention of his female peers at UA. We know from the series and the data books that Sato actually bakes every week in the dorms, and the girls from 1A and 1B are always involved in tasting what he makes and having some, making him pretty popular at their tea parties. When he's older, he'll definitely maintain some of that popularity because he'll be a huge, muscular, powerful hero who also bakes amazing treats. 
halfway through our list and we've made it to Mezo Shoji. Shoji is our large resident body morphing shinobi, but he's had his ups and downs in the series, with him being really helpful for Team Mineta during the sports festival and saving Deku's life against rampaging Tokoyami. He's training and interning with Gang Orca and his band of wild miscreants, so he probably has to use his enhanced senses to keep up with all of their madness, I'm sure. Shoji's stats are an A in power, D in speed, B in technique, C in knowledge, and a B in teamwork. His A in power likely comes from the fact that he can make a bunch of arms to attack you all at high power, but let's see how his stats have changed. He's still rocking an A in power, a D in speed, and a C in knowledge, but he now has an A in technique, which probably means the amount and type of things he can create with his dupla arms is much vaster. He's one of the sensor types in the class, but he can also fight and defend himself, so Shoji is actually a really well-rounded hero. He has three A's in his stats, which are balanced by that D and that C, so let's see how he can improve by the next data book whenever that one ends up coming out. The next hero on our list is also interning of Gang Orca right now, and she's another fan favorite in the class. Kyoka Jiro, otherwise known as Earphone Jack, is a hero that you'd think would spend a lot of her time learning how to use her sound-based quirk with present mic. Jiro is another sensor type student, so at first, her focus was more on listening out for enemies by plugging her earphones into the ground and walls, but she's always been able to send sounds through the things that she plugs into. She can amplify the sound of her heartbeat to cause shockwaves of sound, but it's much more of a disrupting force than a concussive blast. Her stats in the first data book are as follows. She had an E in power, C in speed, C in technique, C in knowledge, and an A in teamwork. These have improved a bit, and we saw that thanks to Jiro's good performance in the 1A versus 1B matches. Her new stats are a C in power, C in speed, B in technique, B in knowledge, and her final stat is the no music, no life stat, which she has an A in. I can see why Orca would want her on his team, because having a sound user, even if the power is only a C, could really be effective against criminals that hide in water or use water for their attacks. Her sound waves could disrupt them and be way more effective as they travel through water, but once again, I'm sure she's primarily there because of her improved technique and knowledge. It's really interesting that Gang Orca has the two best sensory types from Class 1A on his team, and it's almost like he's built his own personal radar system by using two of Class 1A's students. Jiro has a big spotlight in the arc that follows the internships arc in My Hero Academia Season 4, so expect to see and hear her really soon, and make sure you cheer her on. Whether it's a hero or a rock star or both, she definitely has a promising future. Our next student and hero is the huge fan of Spider-Man, Hanta Cero. Cero is one of those powerful characters that doesn't get too much screen time, but he's quickly secured his own powerful fan base, possibly again because of his similarities to Spider-Man, the real world's most popular hero. Cero's stats from the first book are an E in power, B in speed, B in technique, C in knowledge, and an A in teamwork. Cero definitely isn't a hero to laugh at since he managed to tape up Todoroki in the sports festival before Todoroki could dodge or freeze the tape. And Cero's always been really good at using his tape as a utility for his friends or for mobility. His new stats are a D in power, an A minus in speed, an A plus in technique, a B in knowledge, and an A in fashion. He's definitely faster than before, and he's become really good at tape swinging and subduing multiple enemies at the same time, if you recall from the provisional license exam and the 1A versus 1B battles. Having to carry his own weight and the weight of others while he tapes them up and slams them around is probably why his strength and techniques have improved so much, but where is this drip that we're supposed to be seeing from Sero? Hopefully soon we'll be able to see this students being able to relax in some normal clothing so we can really judge who's dripping and who's drowning. But for now, let's move on. The next member of the class that we're gonna cover is number 14 and one of my personal favorites, Fumikage Tokoyami. Tokoyami has definitely had an interesting journey through our story, at first just being the quiet stand user of the class, as he and Dark Shadow were instrumental in Deku's team qualifying for the next round. Later we see Tokoyami as his quirk begins to rampage, and Dark Shadow tears through the forest in Season 3, so we know he's potentially a very devastating force, but what are his stats? From the first book, Tokoyami's stats are as follows. He had a D in power, C in speed, B in technique, C in knowledge, and an A in teamwork. After learning how to get a hold of his quirk and making use of Dark Shadow in multiple ways, his stats have changed to a B plus in power, A minus in speed, C in technique, C in knowledge, and an S in emoness. Now his power going from a D to a B plus is a huge upgrade, and again, that's because of his Black Ankh ability. This ability lets him wear Dark Shadow over his body, strengthening him and making him faster. 
While in this form, he can do a number of things like sort of fly, attack at long and medium range, and evade techniques. Now, if you notice, his technique actually went from a B to a C, and I feel like that's because he does have a hang of using Dark Shadow to fly, but he still hasn't quite mastered it, and it's actually still pretty awkward, a fact that Tokoyami is quick to admit. Once his technique is back up to a B or even an A, you can expect him to be flapping his Dark Angel wings as he enjoys his revelry in the dark. Number 15 on this list is one you might have missed if I didn't point her out, so of course that has to be Toru Hagakure, our Invisible Girl. It's a safe bet to say that Toru hasn't gotten as much screen time as she deserves, but that's also not fair because she could be in every single scene just lurking in the back. Joy Boy has a popular theory that Toru is the UA traitor, and of course, you can sort of see why, especially when you consider that she's again entirely invisible. I wonder if Horikoshi is ever going to sketch what Toru looks like, or if that's something that we'll see in a future arc somehow. Regardless, her stats from the first data book are a D in power, a C in speed, B in technique, B in knowledge, and an A in teamwork. Her new stats are pretty much unchanged besides her technique, which is now an A, and her invisibility, which is an S. These two things go hand in hand because I think the only reason Toru's technique has gone up is due to her ability to refract light to flashbang her enemies. Her being able to bend light in certain ways through her body could actually be insanely broken because theoretically she could be capable of doing all sorts of subliminal messaging and illusions and that's not even to speak of the fact that she could be one of the world's best spies who can also go on the attack and take you down because it's very hard for you to tell where her attacks are coming from on the case of her being invisible. It'll be interesting to see if Toru learns other ways to refract light to attack her enemies, and she has the perfect opportunity thanks to her interning alongside Aoyama and Ashido, a character that has beams of light and another character that already promotes flexibility in the movements and thinking processes of her peers. All in all, having any sort of quirk that attracts light or affects light or refracts it tends to be pretty ridiculous in anime, so let's see where her stats are by the third book and if she has any more special techniques under her belt. Next up, we've got number 16, the shortest and definitely most hated member of class 1A, Minoru Mineta. Now, Mineta's never been one of the most amazing members of the class, and he certainly isn't entering 1A's big three anytime soon. But there's still definitely some fun stuff about this little guy, and at least he has the spirit of a hero, even if he can't control his weird, perverted nature. His great brush technique that he used against Midnight is actually pretty great, and he's been using the great balls from his pop-off quirk to be useful in various ways ever since the first season. His stats in the Ultra Archive book, which is the first data book, are an E in power, E in speed, B in technique, a in knowledge, and a B in teamwork. They've now ascended to an E in power, but a B plus in speed, an A in technique, an A plus in knowledge, and an E in common sense. That's pretty harsh, but I'm hoping that Mineta is actually going to go through a growth spurt and attain a certain level of maturity as he keeps getting presented with dire circumstances and as the years at UA go by. He's able to use his hair to climb buildings or create traps for villains, so let's hope he finds some other uses for it also. Finally, before we get to the big three members of the class, we have maker of cannons, Momo Yaoyorozu. Momo is one of the most potentially useful and terrifying members of the class because she has the ability to create anything as long as she can picture it and knows how it's made. It's not clear what the limitations to this are, but I've got a Momo theory coming up at some point that would suggest that she's way more powerful than she thinks she is, but she's just suffering from a lack of creativity if her appearances in the anime and manga are anything to judge. Her stats were a D in power, C in speed, B in technique, S in knowledge, and an A in teamwork. Her stats now are a D in power, C in speed, A plus in technique, S in knowledge, and an A in operations. She wasn't much of a fighting hero, so her speed and power being low makes sense, and thanks to Todoroki believing in her during the final exams and her learning to have confidence in her own planning and abilities, her technique has gone from a B to an A+. This is enough to rival some pro heroes, so she should definitely be really proud of herself. It's honestly unfortunate that her quirk hasn't been used in more unique and interesting ways, but here's hoping that she has some great fights or moments in the future where she can't depend on making another cannon. Operations probably means that Momo is good at keeping track of all all the things that are needed on the battlefield and adapting to make sure that the situation goes in her favor. Stay tuned for my Momo video that'll definitely drop eventually since I'll detail how she could actually become one of the best students in the class. All right, we've gotten to the big three of class 1A, otherwise known as the origin trio. 
We'll be starting off with Shoto Todoroki, the son of the flame hero and number one hero in Japan, Endeavor. Now Todoroki has one quirk that seems to be a perfect 50-50 fusion of his parents' quirks. He has Endeavor's Fire and Ray's Ice, but you can't say that these quirks are perfect because the sides that he can use them on are split. I've got a personal theory that the reason that his quirk operates this way is actually due to a mental block caused by his dark family history. After all, it would make sense that he'd want to keep his mother and father separate from each other, so why wouldn't he subconsciously want to keep their quirk separate? We know that he pretty much flat out refused to use his father's side at all, and we keep seeing examples of mental blocks that characters aren't even aware of affecting how their quirk works. If he could somehow mix both sides together and shoot either fire or ice out of either side, it would make him able to fly like Endeavor by shooting fire out of his feet, and maybe he'd even be able to shoot ice out of both of his hands. This is terrifying when you really think about it, because we've seen the giant ice and fire blast that he can do with one hand. So imagine what he could do with two. His original stats were an A in power, B in speed, A in technique, B in knowledge, and a C in teamwork. His teamwork is low because Todoroki used to only rely on his quirk to be the answer to every situation, not his friends. He's the kind to walk into a room and freeze literally everything in an instant, and then use his other hand to melt his friends out, and that changes thanks to the events of the sports festival and the stain arc. Now as impressive as these stats are, Todoroki's new stats are an S in power, A in speed, a B minus in technique, B in knowledge, and an A in love of Soba. That last one makes me wonder who might have an S in love of Soba. Hey, hey, get out of here, Tomioka. Anyway, you can see how Todoroki's stats have gone up, and it makes sense. Him having an S in power is pretty surprising, because that puts him on the level of some of the best pro heroes. But remember, he does have the number one hero's quirk, and we've seen him do ridiculous things with both halves of his quirk, even when he still hasn't mastered either yet, especially his fire side. It's interesting to see how much faster he is, but it makes sense when you think that he can literally skate and move on his ice quickly, and he's able to keep up with Bakugo and Deku in the current arc of the manga. What's strange about Shoto's stats is that his technique has actually gone down to a B- from a B. So hopefully this time of Endeavor sharpens him up and gets that up to an A. Second to last on this list is of course, Katsuki Bakugo, the hero without a hero name. While we still don't technically have a true hero name for Bakugo, Kachan definitely is available. Just saying. Now, Bakugo has always felt like he was amazing because everyone in his life told him he was. This made it so that people would lean on him for everything, but nobody ever supported him or asked if he was okay. They assumed that he could handle anything, which is a part of why he resents Deku so much, because Deku puts holes in Bakugo's mentality that he can handle any and everything on his own. It's that lesson that Deku teaches Bakugo time and time again that helps him grow and develop as a character, and although his personality isn't extremely different because he's still set in his ways, his ability to think rationally and be serious and even almost kind in moments, especially compared to himself at the beginning of the series, is pretty awesome. His original stats were an A in power, B in speed, A in technique, B in knowledge, and an E in teamwork. That E is the big thing, because Bakugo is absolutely the worst person to try to team up with and work together with, especially if your name is Midoriya. For a first year student at UA to have an A in power and technique, and no stat lower than a B, is really impressive. So once he started learning how to win by saving while saving by winning, he opened up to a whole new world of potential. His updated stats in Ultra Analysis book fit way more of his perfectionist nature, with him having an A in power, A in speed, a plus in technique, an A in knowledge, but he has an E in word usage. That's probably not just about him cursing, but it's also probably about how he says what's on his mind and doesn't sugarcoat anything, even as he speaks loudly, instead of just being reserved and relaxed. His other stats, though, are incredible, and it's wild to think that Bakugo pretty much has straight A's for his stats. He arguably has the best stats out of every single class when a student, only comparable to our final member on this list, Deku. His technique being the stat that's an A+, is probably due to how amazingly mobile and efficient he is with his movements, being able to bounce around and get behind somebody from ridiculous angles with ridiculous speed, thanks to his really technical use of his quirk to aim himself in the directions of his explosions, while also keeping track of how his body moves to adjust and not land on his face or awkwardly. Finally, we have our main character and the last member of this list and Class 1A, Izuku Midoriya, otherwise known as Deku, the future greatest hero. Deku has had a really rough time throughout the story learning how to use one for all, the quirk passed down to him by All Might, the number one hero. He got his quirk only within the last two years, and he's had to reach the same level and heights as his peers and even the villains that he comes up against in that short of a time. At first, he would utterly destroy his body, but we've gotten to the point where Deku doesn't really injure himself much at all during his fights, at least not in any sort of permanent way. His stats in the initial data book are an E in power, an E in speed, a B in technique, 
B in knowledge, and an A in teamwork. That A in teamwork is a standout accomplishment because Deku has insane knowledge on heroes and their quirks. He writes down anything that he can about his friends and their quirks, their strengths and their weaknesses, and he also does the same with all of the pro heroes that he hears about. This is all pretty much thanks to him growing up as a massive fanboy of quirks. This means that he has all of this knowledge available to him when it comes time to develop a plan, and he's shown time and time again that he's really, really good at coordinating heroes and their quirks to come to the best resolution in a situation. His power and speed were awful, obviously, because he was pretty much a normal person that had to break his arms or legs to do anything. His technique and knowledge weren't awful, because like we saw when he had to throw the ball during their initial training at UA for Aizawa, he is good at coming up with interesting and intuitive ways to use his quirk, even with the obvious drawbacks, and he's a very quick learner who also dedicates the time that it takes to catch up to everyone. That training and learning comes in handy and makes him by far the most improved student in the entire class. His new updated stats are an A plus in power, A in speed, A in technique, a in knowledge, and an E in aura. Now the E in aura just means that Deku doesn't really have much of a presence. Everyone sees him as that kid who broke his fingers during the sports festival because he doesn't really have any sort of threatening or powerful aura about him. He's definitely become really fast and agile, and he even has various special moves and techniques and interesting ways to use one for all, like how he spun and bounced off the wall when he fought Shinso in the 1A versus 1B battles. He's recently awoken to the fact that he'll be able to control six additional quirks that have been hidden away within one for all, each coming from a previous user of the quirk, and he's focusing on trying to master the first of those quirks, Black Whip, which is a venom-like black amorphous mass of tentacles that comes from his arm that he can manifest. This quirk reacts to his thinking and his desires, so it isn't just as simple as Spider-Man using his webs, but hopefully Deku's gonna get the hang of it at some point. Whew, okay, that was a long list, but if you want to see how the 1A students live up to their teachers, including All Might, Midnight, and Aizawa, you can get this video to 4,000 likes. In the meantime, I'll be working on videos for this season and a few theories that I'm cooking up. I hope this video has been informative for you guys, and I'll be sure to revisit the class's stats whenever the third data book is around, so hit that subscribe button and just sit your butt right there for more info and content. I love you guys, it's Pineapple, peace.